the following takes place between 8 p.m. and 9 p.m. Well, hello once again, everybody. We welcome you to a very special Patriot Playoff edition of Time Out for Sports Talk. I'm Todd Bloniars alongside Howie McClellan, and we've got uh, we got the uh, decor appropriate here where uh, the, the lights are on at Gillette Stadium getting ready for uh, this Saturday night. Yeah, it's great. It's nice and warm. I mean, here it is January. We're at the stadium, and it's nice and warm. I love it. Looking pretty good, and of course, uh, we've got the big game coming up this Saturday uh, with the uh, the Denver Broncos to preview. Uh, if you're watching the program, by the way, you'd like to email us with your comments. You can send them to uh, Timeout for Sports Talk at Gmail or Hotmail.com. Both those uh, mailboxes still work. And of course, you can uh, watch uh, the rebroadcast of this program anytime uh, through BelmontMedia.org as well as Blip.tv. So, uh, what, your your quick thoughts on the uh, the Patriots? Uh, what you saw of them this year, and uh, uh, what you liked and didn't like, maybe. Loved their offense. Loved the. Uh, team concept, not too happy with the defensive backfield. Um, and hopefully that's not their Achilles tendon going into this whole playoff series. Yeah, I would agree. I mean, obviously the defense is going to be the question uh, as it's been uh, throughout the year. But uh, right now we're actually uh, being joined on the line. We have a special guest with us. Uh, Paul Perillo, the editor of Patriots Football Weekly, is joining us here uh, on our uh, special playoff preview edition of Time Out. Paul, uh, thank you very much for joining us. Thanks for having me, guys. All right. Well, uh, my, my first question to you, Paul, is that obviously I think embedded in the, uh, the heads of most Patriots fans, I don't know if I won't necessarily include you here, Howie, but a little bit uh, with me to some degree, is, are the results of the last couple of seasons and the one and out playoff exits, the quick departures by the Patriots. What do you think makes this 2011 team different, or how do you think, Paul, that the 2011 team is different than uh, the teams of the last couple of years that made the, uh, the quick playoff uh, departures? Well, we're going to find out. <laughs> it's not going to take too long to find out, uh, you know, what's going to make these uh, these teams different. But, you know, I would say just, you know, kind of, you know, watching this team over the course of the season, uh, a couple of things. I, I think there's a lot of similarities, frankly, with how they played this year and last year. I think they obviously relied on the offense and Tom Brady and, and scoring points and getting leads, and I think that made the defense's job a lot easier. Um, they were able to play from ahead. Now, late in the season, they fell behind a lot, and – uh, this is one of the things that I think is a little bit different, and, that, and I think that uh, you saw some of the old-time mental toughness that the Patriots showed. I thought their ability to come from behind, um, really, what, Washington, Denver, and, and you know the two big holes at home to end the season with Miami and Buffalo, that was the kind of stuff we didn't really see a whole lot of in 2009 and in 2010. Uh, I thought they were a great front-running team in those seasons, and um, this year, it didn't really matter if they fell behind two scores. They were able to come back. And I think that's what the, uh, the that was one of the trademarks that I remember from the, the title teams of especially uh, 03 and 04 is that they, they could fall behind and they weren't necessarily cooked. And, um, you know, that mental toughness, I think, that Bill Belichick instills, I think we, we saw some of that this year. And I think that might be a difference between now and last year. Do you think, really quick, uh, what do you think the reason is for the, the games of the last month where the Patriots seem to be asleep in the first quarter and start off so slowly? Well, I think that um, whenever this offense isn't clicking, it could be trouble. Um, you know, defensively, they have not been very good um, for more than a game or two all season long. I mean, I, I, I know that probably sounds a little bit frank and, uh, and negative, but really, if you look at it, they played some pretty bad football teams coming down the stretch against some backup quarterbacks and some pretty inept offenses and yet still couldn't stop them. Uh, you know, to watch Dan Orlovsky throw, uh, you know, a couple of touchdown passes in the fourth quarter of a game, and I know they had a big lead, but you would like to think that you could, you could stop a team when you have that kind of a lead and you know they have to throw and they couldn't. Um, we saw it in Washington with Rex Grossman. We saw it in Philadelphia a little bit with Vince Young. Now, if he was... Uh, you know, any, anywhere close to his targets for most of that day, that game could have been a lot different. He missed a lot of open guys uh, in that game and still threw for 400 yards. Uh, and then clearly we started with Matt Moore and Ryan Fitzpatrick to close out the season. So 
I think when the offense isn't clicking, this team is in jeopardy of falling behind because defensively, I think they need the offense to sort of set the tempo for them and, and get it going. Uh, you know, and against Buffalo, they come out, they give up a touchdown, the offense punts. They're not really equipped to get the ball back for the defense, you know, for the offense right there and, and, and start it again. The offense has to turn the tide in these games. And for whatever reason, guys, the last couple of weeks, uh, last, I'd say, what, you know, five or six times out of the last six or seven games, the offense has sort of sputtered a little bit in the first quarter. I think they have five straight drives in the first quarter uh, of three and out. Uh, and that's not going to get it done. No, it's not. Well, well, based on that, how much input do you think McDaniels is going to have coming back right off the bat? Well, I think it's a fascinating uh, subplot to this game, you know, him coming back, and as luck would have it, Denver pulls off the upset yesterday, and, and they're going to be here, and it's his old team. I, I mean, I think he'll help. I think that he probably knows some things about Tim Tebow and, and then that team in general that maybe uh, they, they missed the first time around, and um, you know, I, I think at this point it's it's less about scheme and, and, and just more about execution and, and, and who's and who's out there playing. It's a war of attrition to throw all my cliches in one one sentence there. <laughs> um, you know, at this at this point it's it's who's healthy enough to play. But I do think Josh, you know, he's a bright offensive mind. Um, I you know you know the Patriots think an awful lot of him to immediately have targeted him like that to bring him back as soon as they had you know uh, an inkling that Bill O'Brien was leaving. So. Yeah, I think he helps. Uh, do, do I think he has a big discernible difference in this game? Probably not, but it's you know, it's fun to talk about this week. And uh, mentally, I think it's probably a good thing to have that on your side. Well, the one thing you can say about Josh McDaniels is he was probably one of the few who thought that uh, Tim Tebow could go out and have a game like he did yesterday against the Steelers, uh, accurately throwing, moving the ball downfield, big chunks of yardage. The one, the one thing to compare the Steelers and the way they play defense to uh, what we're going to see from the Patriots, and you know, as bad as the Patriots' defense is, maybe their defense is a little better equipped to handle Tebow. It seemed like Pittsburgh was throwing everybody up uh, in the box. They were, they were saying, you know, we're going to stop the run no matter what, and we're going to let Tebow try to beat us with the pass. And of course, he, he passed. Which he did. He did. Very. He was very accurate. Yeah. But the Patriots aren't going to allow Tebow to complete, you know, 30, 40, 50 yard passes because, you know, it seems to me the, the trend all year with the secondary has been play way back, let them get all the underneath stuff. Uh, don't let Denarius Thomas uh, beat anybody uh, long. Yeah, I would agree with you. I think the Patriots will take exactly that approach. And, and to be honest with you, I know the, the, the Steelers have gotten a ton of criticism today for their game plan and I, I think the game plan was fine I think the execution was was putrid I think Ike Taylor and I thought it was interesting that he tweeted this out but I think Ike Taylor played one of the worst games you'll ever see a cornerback play um, it, they, it's yeah, one they thing said, have they a, said a it might have been a record for yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, your cornerbacks taking the wide receivers one on one but it's another thing to consistently just let that wide receiver then run by you and that's what he did you know he made it easy for Tebow um, you know a lot of people look at the deep throws down the field I think those are the easy ones. You know, when you have a guy streaking down the field behind a, a cornerback, you just lay it out there and let him go run underneath it. But what he can't do is what you guys just talked about, what you expect to see out of the Patriots' defense, and I agree. Belichick will sit back. He'll probably rush three, maybe four guys. He won't blitz them too much. Make him beat him from the pocket. Keep him contained. And see if he can hit 15-yard outs and 15-yard in, uh, in cuts. On, on third down to move the chains. I don't think he can. He hasn't done it consistently in any single game that he's ever played in. He didn't do it yesterday when, when the uh, Steelers, uh, you know, actually kept receivers in front of them. Uh, you know, you saw the pass at the end of regulation, a wide open in cut. He threw straight into the ground. Those aren't the kind of throws that Tebow's going to beat you with. And I would expect the Patriots to make him, you know, make 8, 10, 12 play drives to score. If they can slow down the run, unlike they did early in the last game, uh, I just don't see Tebow making throws to beat you. Were you surprised at the lack of use of Heinz Ward yesterday? No, no, no. He's all done. I mean, he's. I mean, I just. Yeah, uh, he's he's uh, he's a shell of himself. Great career. Uh, you know, I have a lot of respect for Heinz Ward, but yeah, at this stage, I just don't think he's fast enough to to compete. Yeah, I also think that was the, you know, it seemed like that was starting to show it even at the end of last season, I thought. Uh, he was definitely starting to slow down. And, you know, obviously Wallace and Brown are such a bigger part of their uh, their game now for Roethlisberger. He knows those guys can go deep. And, yeah, I mean, Ward has been kind of reduced to, uh, you know, maybe, uh, you know, someone they can throw to, like a Welker type. But yeah, but that's, what that's I mean. not that's the what Steelers I, type of offense. Yeah, but I figured maybe they could have used him in that in that way, you know, the short, yeah, I, I mean, I had no passes. problems with the Steelers offense yesterday for the most part. The only time they got in trouble was either when they dropped a pass or when they couldn't protect Ben. Uh, otherwise, 
I thought they moved it at will. And, you know, there was, you know, if, even if you, you said Wallace and, and Brown and you throw in Sanders and Cotchery, you know, where, you know, Heath Miller's a good solid tight end. Where does Heinz Ward fit in in that group? I don't think he's better than any of those five. So, I mean, like I said, great career, uh, a thousand receptions, uh, you know, probably one of those guys that is going to give the Hall of Fame committee, uh, you know, a, an argument. I don't think he's a Hall of Fame player, but he's going to have numbers that are commensurate with that discussion. But I, I just think at this stage you needed to go with some of your uh, your athletes and, and speed guys. And those guys were open. They consistently uh, got open and, and made plays. They just didn't catch the ball often enough. And then, you know, other times I thought, you know, Ben was just under pressure. But even then, uh, you know, I thought they were – at the end of regulation, at the tie game, they're on the 45-yard line. They're probably about eight or ten yards away from winning the game, and I thought they made a tactical error in, in trying to, to continue to throw the ball. I thought they should have either uh, just tossed a quick screen or run an inside draw with Redmond and, and try to get those you know, five, six, seven yards. Now you have a field goal attempt at the very least. I thought they made a mistake there at the end of regulation. I mean, 23 points is probably enough to beat Denver. And... Uh, you know, that's what Pittsburgh ended up with yesterday. Their defense let them down. Yeah, no, that was uh, definitely the case. And, you know, you're talking about, well, the other thing that, that let them down was, you know, their banged-up offensive line at the end of regulation. You know, as you said, uh, Paul, they, you know, the Steelers were trying to pass the ball. Roethlisberger, that huge sack at the end of regulation that took them right out of field goal range. Talking about that pass rush, though, from uh, from Denver, you know, uh, Doomerville and, and Von Miller, and, you know, what's going to be the challenge for the Patriots' offensive line uh, trying to uh, to combat that? I mean, Brady took a few hits in the, the game four weeks ago out and there. Mankins and, is out. And Mankins, yeah, what's the update on Mankins? I mean, is the Patriots offensive line in as much a state of flux as uh, the Steelers was yesterday? Uh, I don't think it's to that extent. Um, and from what I'm being told about Mankins, they expect him to play. Okay. Um, you know, we'll see what happens this week. There's even, uh, you know, I, I would expect him to be out there. I think there are some plans to have him, uh, you know, back in the lineup. You have Matt Light and Solder probably, uh, you know, back at the tackles. We'll see if Volmer can get back out there. But uh, I think either way, I, to be honest with you, I'd rather have Solder out there right now than Volmer, given the amount of time that Volmer's been off. Uh, I can't imagine that he'd be, you know, in peak, peak condition to come back and play in this game. So uh, I, I think that's something – you know, that, that should be settled down. And, and I tell you, guys, I, it seemed like every week down the stretch they were facing bookend pass rush, dynamic pass rush guys. And I thought, uh, you know, virtually each and every one of them was, uh, you know, really stymied. I mean, you had Arakpo and Kerrigan uh, against Washington, Freeney and Mathis against Indianapolis, Doomerville and, uh, and Miller, as you said, against Denver. And, yeah, I mean, th there were plays made here and there. We remember the big hit that Doomerville laid on Brady, uh, that was the obvious one. But for the most part, I, I, and this is kind of a weird thing, to me, I don't think the outside pressure bothers Tom Brady at all. I mean, I think there are times where guys can get the edge and he just steps right up in the middle. The guys that I would worry about in this game are, are guys that aren't really known for their pass rushing ability. Robert Ayers and, and uh, or Broderick Bunkley, guys like that. If, you can, if, if you're Denver, they have to get pressure in this game or they can't win. So they got to find a way, in my opinion, to get some pressure inside and not allow Tom Brady to step into the pocket. That's where he makes his living. That's where he killed him uh, a couple of times uh, out, out in Denver, moving up in the pocket, sliding around. I think he hit Welker for a big play on one of those, hit Hernandez for a big play. Um, you know, Hernandez had the big game. To me, it's all about that inside. So getting a guy like Mankins back, as you guys mentioned at the top, I think would be important, and I do think he's going to play. Speaking of number 12, uh, how, how is Brady's uh, non-throwing shoulder? Is that going to be a, a, a huge issue on Saturday? Well, you know, I don't think it will be provided that they're able to protect him reasonably well, but you never know what happens if he takes a big hit. You know, Roethlisberger got knocked around a little bit in that game yesterday. If Brady gets knocked around like that, you know, who knows how they react to it, and who knows how he reacts to it in terms of not only the physical that you guys mentioned with the left shoulder, but... The mental, because let's face it, this this playoff stuff, this is not just about the Patriots. This is about Tom Brady too. Um, he has not played well in the playoffs in his last couple of games here. You know, the Baltimore and the Jets game. I'm not going to put those games on Brady, but he did not play well in those games. And if you go back, you sort of, you know, you look back at his his postseason career. It's almost divided. I think it might be divided up evenly now. 
Uh, just I about. Think I think it's 19 or 20 starts. He you started know, first, 10 and 0, and he's four and five in his last nine. Uh, I think he's starts. five and five in the last 10 games or something like that. Right. Four and five. You say four and five in the last nine. Well, he's nine? 14 and five overall. He won his first nine. He actually won his first uh, 10 so, playoff I mean, starts. That's, yeah, listen, and then, this is th- those are Peyton Manning numbers. Yeah. Four, four and five in his last nine. But you know the the difference is Manning had no success early in his career, and then he had a little success. You know, later in his career when he finally got over the hump and won the Super Bowl. Brady had the luxury of winning early, so now he established himself as a great clutch quarterback, which he is. So, you know, it's interesting how you can look at those things differently, but four and five, that's not a small sample. That's a lot of games. Um, Over a lot of years. He has not played as well, clearly, in those last nine as he did in the first ten. If you start banging him around a little bit and getting him antsy in the pocket, it'd be interesting to see how he reacts both mentally and physically. Especially the, the last few games, the way they've played in the first quarter. I mean, he's, he's been throwing balls at people's feet, right. over their heads. I mean, it's almost like he's rattled when the game starts, which is very uncharacteristic of him. You know, I mean, of course, he's been able to come back, but those slow starts, you hope it doesn't come back to haunt him in the playoffs because when the playoffs start, it's a whole different ball game. Yeah, I agree, and that's one of the things that I'm worried about him physically because I'm wondering if maybe he's, you know, needs a little bit extra time to get warmed up and he's going through the warm-up process. It seems like the Patriots either win the toss and defer or lose the toss every week. So the other team gets the ball first. Generally, the other team will move the ball and score. If they, if they don't score, they're moving the ball and holding it for a little while. So all of a sudden it's, you know, 5, 10, 15 minutes of actual time that Tom is sitting around the sideline. You see him constantly throwing on the sideline. I wonder if he's having a hard time getting loose before the start of these games, and, and that's maybe playing into the slow starts. That's something we'll probably never find out about, but you know, just something that, that I've been thinking about the last couple of weeks. Well, and then certainly, Paul, there's also the pressure I think Brady's got to be feeling because the defense is not the kind of defense he had in his first 9, 10 playoff starts. Now you know he probably feels a little extra pressure that he's got to have to do more and score more points in order for, for his team to win. I don't know if you read this too, Paul. There was an interesting stat uh, about you were talking about the coin toss. I was just going yeah, to bring was, that up. Yeah. You, you, yeah, the stat is that uh, when was the last time the Patriots won the coin toss and did not defer? Yeah, I don't think this is true, but uh, they said back in the, the, the day that he he hurt his ACL. Yeah. Yeah, opening day. I'm not opening sure. i got to check late. on that one. That, that's a, I'm glad you brought that up. That was something that I, I did read Sunday uh, in the Globe, and um, I'm not sure that that's accurate, but I, I'm going to go back and look at that. Let's say, with that being said, and with the slow starts, like I said, maybe he's getting, having a hard time warming up. Maybe yeah. maybe if they win the, the toss, maybe they should just start right on, on offense and let him just get right out there where he's warmed up. Yeah, I asked uh, Belichick that last week. You know, it's funny, that story that the Globe uh, put out was based on uh, <laughs> what I thought was sort of a uh, tongue-in-cheek line of questioning that myself and, and my, you know, my fellow colleague at Patriots Football Weekly, Andy Hart, were asking Belichick about last week. And, you know, lo and behold, it turns out to be this big takeout in the Globe on Sunday. Um, yeah, I, I, I posed that to Bill. I thought that not only you, you might be able to get off to a better start offensively, but if you go down and score... Um, isn't that helping your defense to, to, to take the field with a, a 3 nothing or a 7 nothing lead instead of, you know, having to start the game all the time and allowing the other team to get the lead? But, you know, it's hard to argue with the results because you, we know why Belichick likes to defer. He likes to have that opportunity to double dip there and get the, the uh, consecutive possessions at the end of the half and at the start of the second half. And generally they score in those two-minute drives. So you have the opportunity to get two scores in a row and, you know, let's, let's face it, the Patriots have won eight in a row, so it's not hurting them. Yeah, I was just going to say, like you just said, they're 13-3, and three, so it's hard to argue with the results. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. All right, before we let you go, Paul, uh, your, your thoughts on the game Saturday, maybe even a score you want to throw out? I mean, is this going to be a blowout or closer than we think uh, in the rematch of these yeah, teams? Yeah, right now my, my gut reaction is blowout. I, I mean, I just don't see Denver being able to run the ball the way they did in the first game. i got to think that Belichick fixes that and doesn't allow, uh, you know, 167 yards rushing in the first quarter and 16 quick points, you know, by early in the second quarter. I think they, like I said, I think they make Tebow pick his way down the field. I think they, they do a better job stopping the run on early downs and make Tebow throw on third and longs, and, and he can't do that. I just flat out, I don't think he can, he can beat them throwing the football. Barring turnovers, I think the Patriots offense will just smother Denver, and uh, it'll be very similar to the way the last 
uh, say two and a half quarters were uh, out in Denver. I think the Patriots win going away, maybe something like 38 to 17. Yeah, all in all, though, I, I do got to say I, I have enjoyed the the Tebow run. It's been kind of a nice story to see, you know, someone like him who's you know who can actually be a role model for kids and and things like that. But yeah, it's got to stop this week. Yeah, it's a great story. <laughs> it's been a lot. I mean, that game last night, it was great for the NFL. I mean, they had kind of three duds um, before that, and that was. I mean, that turned into an epic, and that was uh, great theater to watch and sort of following it on, you know following everybody online on, on Twitter while the game was going on. I mean, it just seemed like everybody was completely engrossed in that game. It was a lot of fun to watch. I believe the uh, highest rated regular season uh, television uh, broadcast this year for uh, the NFL was the uh, the Pats-Denver game in December. So here we go, uh, the big rematch where I'm sure the ratings are going to be going through the roof Saturday night, 8 o'clock at Gillette Stadium. Absolutely. All right, Paul Perillo of uh, Patriots Football Weekly, thank you very much again for joining us. Hopefully uh, we can do this again during this playoff run. Sure, anytime, guys. Okay. I enjoyed it. <laughs> Thanks, Paul. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Paul. All right, that was Paul Perillo, the uh, editor of uh, Patriots uh, Football Weekly, and uh, we've still got a little bit of time here with, with our own thoughts. But, uh, yeah, I mean, your, your general uh, thoughts, I mean, do you kind of agree with Paul that the, the game uh, could shape up to be a blowout? For some reason, I'm still yeah. I'm getting caught up in this uh, Tebow, especially the way he, he did a lot of things in the game yesterday against Pittsburgh that uh, he hadn't been uh, – you know, he hadn't been doing uh, up, you know, up to the pre, you know the last three weeks. It just it just seems to me that the biggest knock on him since he was in college, since he got drafted, is he cannot throw. And it just seems that slowly, week after week, he's a little better, a little better. I mean, he threw for over three hundred yards yesterday. Yeah. I mean, and it, accurately. Yeah, too. I mean, he threw some nice throws. bombs, mm-hmm. and yeah, it's right. It's a lot easier to throw the ball to the guy that's streaking than it is the eight, ten, twelve yard passes. But you know what? He gets better and better every week that he plays. And you know what? He does have this intangible that he wins. And Denver has a good defense. Now, if they can keep Brady in somewhat check, like, again, Paul said, you know, because they just, they don't, he doesn't mind when they come on the outside because he does. He steps right up in the middle and he throws it. If they can clog the middle on him, He's not a scrambler. We know that is he's never been a scrambler. Yeah. You know, they can make the game interesting. He'll look like he looks like Roethlisberger did yesterday on yeah. a bad ankle for Ben, but that's what Tom looks like most and of the time. And we have you know, I hate to use so terrible, but our defensive backfield is nothing to write home about. Yeah. You know, so that'll make him an average passer look even better. So you put all that in the mix, I'm expecting a lot closer game than a blowout. Yeah. I still think we're going to win, but I don't think it's going to be going away. You right. Know? If it was 20, 28 21, you know, 24 mm-hmm. 17, something like that, it wouldn't surprise me. But. Yeah, I mean, I, I think, you know, you're looking at maybe somewhere between a 10 and a 14 point uh, game. I know uh, Paul's uh, prediction was around 21 points. The one thing he did bring up, though, and he was right about this, as good as uh, Tebow looked on those long throws against Pittsburgh, those short ones, he was having some trouble on some oh, yeah. of the short stuff. But those and, ducks, they yeah, wobble. Right, oh yeah, and that's why the Patriots secondary, this this almost seems to be, you know, you heard some folks saying after the game that this is the really the perfect matchup for the Patriots in the sense that this is the way their secondary plays. They'll take the underneath stuff. They want, you know, if you're, you're going to be a Dinkin Dunk passer, you might be able to beat the Patriots. Go back to the Pittsburgh game when Roethlisberger, you know, they didn't go deep in that game. They dinked and dunked. They were actually playing the Patriots offense, right. and they beat the Patriots at their own game, dominated, they controlled the clock, kept the ball out of Brady's hands, and that's how they won that game. And, you know, again, I think that's going to be a similar uh, situation here where, you know, can Tebow do that? I mean, you know, Denver, are they going to be able to possess the ball offensively for 35, 40 minutes? Highly doubtful, especially with Tebow being forced to have to throw a lot of 8, 10, you know, 12 yard passes. Yeah, as long as we can stop the run, but it's it's. I think it's going to be a fun game. Oh you know, yeah, I, I think it's going to be very entertaining. Um, but I just don't think we can. There's we will not lose this game. But you wouldn't think so. I mean, this is the matchup too. That, yeah, you know, I, the playoffs, I wanted we them. Saying, yeah, this is the matchup that the Patriots would want. I mean, yeah, you don't want. Was, I did not want Pittsburgh coming in here because even I, Pittsburgh up. scares me a lot more than the Broncos. Yeah, even you banged know. up as they exactly. were. And they had a few more injuries yesterday. I, I was wondering what they would have had left, uh, you know, if they had somehow been able to pull that game out. Yeah, someone else said that to me today when I was talking. I was going, even as banged up as they are now, you wouldn't want to play them. So they're still the Steelers, and they're still coming in town. And Roethlisberger at 90% or 80% is still better than most quarterbacks. And they have those receivers that can just fly. And if he can get the ball out to them, if they could protect them, 
you know, you don't know what's going to happen there. So, yeah. you know, is this the matchup we wanted? Yes. I think so. I mean, sure. if, if someone said, do you want Pittsburgh or Denver coming in mm. to Foxborough in the first playoff game? You say Denver in a heartbeat. Yeah. Oh, ab- this yeah. year. Absolutely. You but know? you, you, you got to give the Broncos credit for one. I mean, that play call on the first play of overtime. Talk about this. They made a big deal about the new overtime rules. The official spent, like, spent, yeah. felt like he spent about three minutes trying to explain the rules. And then it was over in 15 seconds. <laughs> yeah, know, I one, think it was only 11 seconds. I or think 11, okay, record. Yeah, you're right. 11 seconds. Right. Fastest overtime ever. But what a great play call, too. I mean, Pittsburgh, you'd seen it all game long. They kept jamming that box. They said, try to run on us. And the Broncos really couldn't run at all. I mean, the, the Steelers were dedicated themselves to stopping the run and they, they really did a good job at that, which they've done all year. I mean, traditionally, that's the strength of their defense anyway. But, you know, what a great play call on that first play. And then for, you know, I think McCoy is their offensive coordinator's name, I believe. Uh, I forget his first name. But, uh, you know, he and Tebow, I mean, they decided, okay, you know what? If you see this look and everyone's coming in, the safeties are, are sneaking in and everyone gets in the box, you know, t- throw one over and... Uh, let it Demaris ride, Thomas. see what happens. Yeah. You know? By the way, though, their leading receiver, Eric Decker, uh, is probably not going to play uh, at uh, Foxborough. I think that knee injury he suffered uh, against the Steelers, yeah. probably an uh, injury uh, season ending for him. And he was their uh, leading uh, pass catcher this year, too. Yeah. I, it's, it, it, I'm, like I said, I'm excited. It's going to be a fun game. Mm. You know? I just, just the hype is going to be fun. And we haven't even talked about the tight ends, Gronkowski. And, of course, Hernandez had the big game against Denver because they, you know, the Broncos zeroed in on, on Gronk, Gronk a yeah. little bit more. So they focused on him. Now, if they try to flip that and maybe focus on Hernandez, I mean, you know, I think it's going to be very hard for Denver to stop both of those guys. I mean, So, so when it all pans out, it's going to be Ocho. Ocho Stenko. I you mean, Stenko. So? You think so, really? <laughs> Did you know the Patriots? I think they said. Hey, a, he got engaged. He's gonna have a good game. Oh, what? Oh, uh, Ocho Cinco yeah. did. Oh, really? Yeah, he's all set now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. I think the you know the tight ends. I believe I was reading this. They set a record this year: 169 receptions between uh, between Gronk, wow. Gronkowski and Hernandez. And for for two tight ends, that's a that's a record. And obviously, they're two different types of tight ends. Where Gronkowski's really your old school kind of almost Russ Francis type of tight end, who's a good pass catcher and can just block, get down there, you know, in the trenches and block too. You know, Hernandez is more of your your Shannon Sharp type. For I know he's one of your favorites. <laughs> as far as a tight end, yes. As far as a TV personality, no. But that's you know. That being said, but I mean, they're like a two-headed monster. Yeah. You know, and both of them have speed. I mean, both of them have. I don't want to say like wide receiver speed, but they have in between tight end speed and wide receiver speed, and then you have that height involved too. I mean, it's just, it's it's. Insane. It's, it, they, they are what I would consider the Kevin McHale's of basketball. They're a freak. Yeah. You know, they Kevin are. McHale was, I yeah. mean, he could move and do low post moves that no one's ever seen before, and he would score. And these guys do things as tight ends that tight ends never did before. Sure. You know, you know, also, they're the new breed of tight end. You're right. Also back for uh, for this game against Denver will be uh, Deion Branch, it looks like. Oh, is which he is better? also Good. a plus. Yeah, no, he's he's had a few weeks to rest now, and I think that's going to help him. And certainly, you know, just giving Brady another option. You know, I wouldn't want to compare him necessarily to Heinz Ward. I don't think Branch is quite at the end of his career yet, but uh, but getting close. Yeah. As you saw there, our, uh, we've got our next live show coming up at the end of this month. Uh, that's January 30th, a Monday night. We hope you can tune in for that, uh, our regular 8 o'clock time on uh, Monday the 30th. We also hope that we're going to be coming back to do another uh, playoff preview. What do you mean uh, hope to? Okay, well, we expect the Patriots We're going to be Denver. back again next Monday to next talk week. about the Patriots' win against Denver and who they're going to play right. the next in the AFC Championship. So until, uh, until next week, so long and go Pats. <laughs>